Canada's national flag is relatively new when compared to our closest allies, unlike the United States, which first used a version of its flag at the beginning of the Revolutionary War, and would evolve over time by adding another star with every new state, or the United Kingdom, whose flag symbolizes a union of the three flags for Scotland, England, and Wales, which date back to the early 12th century. Canada's current flag did not exist until 1957, almost a century after Canadian Confederation. Between Confederation and gaining our independence, Canada had many different flags. Our flags evolved, like our territory, to encompass new provinces and territories as they joined the Confederation of Canada. When Newfoundland and Labrador joined Canada in 1949, it became apparent that Canada had expanded its borders as far as it could, and it was time to create a national flag that represented all of our population. Thousands of proposals were put forward by students, professors, and even prime ministers. Here's a look at what Canada's flag looked like in the past and what it could have looked like today. For most of Canada's history, our flag wasn't determined by our government or Canadians themselves, but by our conquerors. An extension of the colonial feud between the United Kingdom and France, parts of Canada flew either the symbol of France or of England, depending on their allegiance. The first flag known to have been flown in Canada was the St. George's Cross, carried by John Cabot when he reached Newfoundland in 1497. In 1534, Jacques Cartier planted a cross in Gaspé, bearing the French royal coat of arms with the fleur-de-lis. As the British began to dominate the region following multiple wars across almost every continent, most of Canada began to fly the Union Jack. This flag would continue to be flown in Canada up until 1931. Shortly after Canadian Confederation in 1867, the need for distinctive Canadian flags emerged. Provinces had previously flown versions of the famous template of the British Red Ensign. Originally, Canada simply combined the coats of arms of its member provinces, and placed it on a red ensign as well. But this does not mean that everyone adopted the same national flag. As new provinces were added, the idea of simply combining coats of arms became increasingly convoluted. By World War I, the crest had become an exceptionally difficult flag to recreate. The sheer number of symbols and confusing crests led to different versions of the Canadian flag being flown within Canada itself, and sometimes by Canadian soldiers overseas. Yet, World War I provided a distinct opportunity. For the first time, all of Canada's member provinces were stationed in the same geographic region. At Vimy Ridge, the Maple Leaf, a symbol that first emerged on the badge of the 100th Prince of Wales Royal Canadian Regiment of Foot, began to be carved into the soft chalk walls of the tunnels beneath the Canadian lines, emerging as a new symbol of national unity. In 1921, by proclaiming the Royal Arms of Canada, King George V made red and white the official colours of Canada. The search for a new national flag that would better represent Canada as an independent nation began in earnest in 1925, when the Privy Council set up a committee to investigate possible designs. This would mark the beginning of what is now called the Great Canadian Flag Debate, which would last almost 40 years. It wasn't until 1946 that the committee gave its first official recommendation, called, rather lazily, the 1946 Special Joint Committee's Recommended National Flag. Sadly, this appeared to be a mere revamp of the Canadian Red Ensign, but it made one noticeable advancement. The committee recognized the maple leaf as Canada's national symbol, despite the fact that the design was never formally adopted. Throughout the time that the committee was working on their own flag, Canadians from every province proposed their own. Attempts to symbolize national unity by using multiple symbols often became very elaborate and only compounded the issue with the crest in the red ensign that they had been trying to solve. Student submissions, like these, succeeded in incorporating symbols from every province, but they often incorporated too much symbolism, and failed to create an image of Canada as a whole. 
Some attempted to do this by making the symbols abstract. This proposal was intended to symbolize French and English unity. Likely the closest Canada came to adopting a flag like this was called the Ephraim Coté, proposed in 1939. It combined the Union Jack and the Fleur de Lis with the maple leaf in the middle symbolizing the combination of the two. But Lester B. Pearson, a Prime Minister of Canada after World War II, wasn't pleased with any of these designs, and it seemed that Canadians weren't either. Twenty years after the first committee came to their conclusion, a second was created. This second select parliamentary committee was appointed with the same mandate as its predecessor, and examined more than 2,600 submissions. Pearson even favoured his own, now colloquially called the Pearson Pennant. The three maple leaves were supposed to symbolise the same idea of unity as the Ephraim Cote, with the addition of blue borders to reference Canada's national motto, From Sea to Shining Sea. Those that loved it, loved it with a passion, like Pearson, but those that hated it were in the majority. So, a new design was proposed. George Stanley, a Canadian historian, teacher, and author, revealed his design. For the first time, the Canadian flag as we know it today began to take shape. Although the Union Jack and Fleur de Lis would eventually be dropped, and the maple leaf changed in favour of a more simplistic, eleven-pointed design, the winner of the great Canadian flag debate had become clear. Making a clean, uncomplex version of the maple leaf centre stage, and removing symbols that would do more for national divisions than national unity, while using only the colours which were made officially Canada's in 1921, Stanley had created the symbol that undeniably represents Canada as a whole to this day. Unlike other countries which needed to revise their flags every time a new province or state was added, Canada's flag is a symbol of a whole country being greater than the sum of its parts. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want us to make similar content in the future, please leave a like and consider subscribing. If you have any ideas for next week's video, please leave a comment and we'll be sure to check it out. We really appreciate any and all support as we continue to grow our channel and try to make the content that you enjoy.